Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the third day of the of, uh, of the value added course that is uh, titled as the civil, Ancient Indian History in the Purview of Civil Services Examination. With the permission of the chair, may I declare the third day of the session of this value added course open? Thank you. Thank you to the chair for granting me the permission to open this session. I will use this opportunity to introduce the speaker for today, Dr. Pallavi Ma'am, an eminent historian, prolific speaker, teacher from Department of Humanities and Social Sciences, Integral University, Lucknow. She specializes in ancient Indian history and have delivered lectures which have catalyzed lots of syllogistic debate regarding academics to be more specific and precise ancient history. She is largely appreciated and acknowledged as a budding historian from Aligarh Muslim University Department of History, Aligarh Center for Advanced Studies. Sorry, uh, Her performance has always been an inspiration for all of us and reflects the high standards for Center for Advanced Studies in History, Department of History, Aligarh Muslim University. Hence, without wasting any further time, I will, uh, with the permission of the chair, will request Dr. Pallavi to enlighten all of us with the expertise she has on the topic. From her topic, we expect her to make us aware about the ontology of prehistory and proto-history, which will uh, in be inclusive of Indus Valley civilization as a part of proto-history, epistemology of the topic, inclusive of questions like uh, what is Indus Valley civilization, where it was located, as previously have been discussed, what was the sources of knowledge regarding Indus Valley civilization. Hence, with, the, uh, with this, I will very politely request, uh, with the permission of the chair, uh, to grant Dr. Pallavi, ma'am, per permission to enlighten us, enlighten us on the topic. Thank you. What to you, Dr. Pallavi, ma'am? Thank you, ma'am. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Danish, sir. Uh, I am very thankful to our uh, AVAP authorities who give me uh, who gave me this privilege to deliver a lecture on Indus Valley civilization. Today is our uh, third day, and uh, today we cover with the uh, we cover the topic of uh, major sites of Indus Valley civilization and archaeological findings. <clears throat> In the major uh, sites uh, of Indus Valley civilization, uh, they are uh, mainly uh, sites are like Harappa, Mohanjodaro, and uh, Lothal, Banavali, and Kalibangan. These are the uh, major sites, and which uh, have always been a part of the debate and our research ka, when we are talking about the urban centers. The fact that uh, uh, Harappan civilization was urban and does not mean that all over even and most of its uh, uh, settlements have, uh, uh, sorry, its uh, settlements had an urban character. A majority uh, were in fact uh, villages. The cities depended on villages for food and perhaps also labor and various kinds of goods produced in cities found their way into the villages. As a result of the brisk, uh, brisk urban uh, and ruler interaction, the typical range of Harappan artifacts uh, reached even small villages sites. And uh, uh, it is not easy to estimate the exact size of uh, ancient settlements as they are often spread over many mounds and buried under uh, layers of uh, alluvium. Uh, alluvium. Nevertheless, uh, it's clear that the Harappan sites varied a great deal in size and function from large cities to uh, small pastoral camps. The large uh, settlements included uh, Mohanjodaro, which is about uh, 200 hectare, uh, Harappa over 150 hectare uh, uh, around, and the uh, Ganveriwala, uh, it is about 80.81.5 uh, hectare. And the next is Rakhigadi over 80 hectare and Dholavira 100 hectare. These are the major sites. And uh, Lurewala in Cholistan with an estimated population of about 35,000 as, uh, as per the views of archaeologists seems to have been as uh, large as the Mohanjodaro. So uh, the and the other larger sites also existed and uh, which is about across 50 hectare uh, in size. And these are uh, Nagore, Tharo, 
दारो एंड लखुइनजो दारो इन सिंध एंड नोंदोवरी इन बलूचिस्तान दीज आर द अदर साइट्स व्हिच आर काउंटेड एज द लार्जेस्ट साइट्स रिसेंटली सम वेरी लार्ज हरप्पन साइट्स हैव बीन रिपोर्टेड इन पंजाब एंड दीज साइट्स आर धलेवान इन मनसा डिस्ट्रिक्ट गुरनी कला फर्स्ट हंसा सॉरी हसनपुर हसनपुर दिस इज हसनपुर सेकंड एंड लखमीर वाला एंड बैगलियन दे इन भटिंडा डिस्ट्रिक्ट बट डिटेल्स आर सो फार लैकिंग द डिटेल्स अबाउट दिस साइट्स आर नॉट वेरी गुड इन नंबर द सेकंड रंग ऑफ हरप्पन सेटलमेंट्स आर मॉडरेट साइज्ड साइट्स रेंजिंग बिटवीन 10 हेक्टेयर टू 50 हेक्टेयर एंड सच एज सच एज जुदीर जोदारो एंड कालीबंगन then there are even smaller sites of 5 to 10 hectare uh, such as amri lothal chahundaro and rojdi the many settlements in 1 to 5 hectare range include aladino kordiji and roper balakot sarkotada nageshar nosharo and gajnisha there are also settlements even smaller than these we have a number of uh, settlements also which are not as uh, uh as in size as the, uh, these uh, sites which i earlier told you the streets and houses of harappan cities were once thought uh, to be laid on a grid pattern oriented and this grid pattern oriented is north south and east west actually even uh, you know mohanjodaro does not show a perfect grid system roads in the harappan cities were not always absolutely straight and did not always cross one another at right angles but the settlements were clearly planned there is no strict correlation between the level of planning and the size of a settlement for example the relatively uh, the level of planning and uh, the size of settlement uh for example the relatively small site of lothal uh, shows a much higher level of planning than kalibangan which is twice its size the detail of the plans differ uh, the detail of the plans of the town planning is different from each other uh, mohanjodaro harappa and kalibangan have a similar layout a consisting of a raised citadel complex and a lower city at lothal and sarkotada the uh, citadel complex is not separate uh, it is located within the main settlement uh, in its most uh, fully developed phase dholavira consisted of not two but three parts the citadel the middle town and the lower town so uh, <clears throat> a major difference between the buildings in uh, large cities and those in smaller towns and villages was in the type of combination of raw materials used in villages uh, the houses were made mostly of mud brick with the additional use of mud and reeds stone was occasionally uh, used for foundation of uh, foundations and drains uh, the uh, stone was uh, occasionally used for the uh, lay foundation of the houses and the drains buildings in the towns and cities were made of sun dried and burnt bricks both type of the bricks are used in the rocky areas of kutch and saurashtra however there uh, was extensive use of stone the massive fortification walls with a veneer of dressed stone at dholavira and the remains of uh, stone pillars in the citadel are very dis- uh, distinctive and are not found at any other harappan sites the fact that some uh, house walls at mohanjodaro uh, survive up to height of 5 meter uh, is a tribute to the strength of the bricks and uh, brick laying skills of the harappans there were various style of laying bricks including what is uh, known as the english bond style uh, and uh, in this uh, brick were laid together in a sequence of long side a uh, stretcher and the short side header so we call we also called it stretcher and header uh, style with an alternate uh, arrangement in consecutive rows 
uh this gave the ball maximum load bearing strength uh, this gave a um, ball a more strength uh, this <coughs> became a ball a more uh, strength bearing so uh, it can uh, more uh, strong than the other uh, other kind of uh, style a striking feature of a harappan structure is the uniformity in the average size of the bricks which is uh, 7 into 14 uh, into 28 cm for houses and for the city walls it is 10 uh, into 20 into 40 cm both these brick size have an identical ratio of thickness width and length is uh, and it is 1 is to 2 is to 4 ratio which i told you earlier in my uh, previous lecture this ratio first makes its appearance uh, at a few sites in the uh, early harappan phase but in the mature harappan phase it is found in all the settlements people lived in houses of different sizes mostly uh, consisting of rooms arranged around a, uh, a central courtyard doorways and uh, window also generally face the side uh, side lanes and rarely opened on to the main street the view from the lane into the courtyard uh, was blocked off by a wall there are remains of staircases also that may have uh, led to the uh, roof or a second story the fact that some of the houses at uh, mohanjodaro were two stories high or more is also uh, suggested by the thickness of their walls Uh, and the, uh, when we talked about the floors they were usually made of hard packed earth often uh, maybe it's uh, re, uh, often it's replastered or covered with sand the ceiling were probably over 3 meter uh, in height and uh, roof may uh, have been uh, roof may have been made of wooden beams covered with reeds and packed clay so Uh, when we talked about the doors and the windows uh, of houses were made of uh, these are the made of woods and mats the clay model of houses show that doors were sometimes carved or painted with simple designs in on this existed only in the models windows had a uh, shutter shutters uh, perhaps made of wood or reeds and mattings with a uh, lattice work uh, grills above and below to the allow in light and air a few pieces of carved alabaster and marble lattice work have been found at harappa and mohenjodaro such slabs may have been set into the brickwork maybe uh, small houses attached to a large ones may have been the quarters of service groups working for wealthy city uh, dwellers in the larger houses passages led into inner rooms and there is evidence of frequent renovation activity bathrooms and toilets when we talked about the bathroom and toilet these are the most uh, necessary facilities which existed in uh, any civilization but when we talked about the harappan uh, uh, washrooms and these are the more uh, functional then uh, we found it anywhere else bathrooms and toilets uh, are facilities people use in every day but which most books on ancient history rarely discuss in it in the case of harappan civilization there is quite a bit of information on this aspect many houses or groups of houses had uh, separate bathing areas and toilets bathing platform with drain were often located in rooms next to a well uh, because well is the main source of water in the cities so the bathrooms are located near the wells the floor of the bathing area was usually made of tightly fitted bricks frequently uh, set on edge to make a carefully sloped water tight surface a small drain led uh, uh, led from here uh, cut through the house wall and went uh, out into the street connecting uh, ultimately with a larger sewage drain although 
some people may have used the area outside the city walls to relieve themselves. Uh, toilet have been identified uh, at many sites. They arranged. Uh, they ranged uh, from the simple hole in the ground above a cesspit to more elaborate arrangements. In recent excavations at Harappa, have uncovered toilets in uh, almost every house. The co commodes were made of big uh, pots hung into the floor, and many of them associated with a small uh, lota type jar or uh, some bidet. No type for washing up, uh, no doubt for washing up. Uh, most of the pots had a small hole in the base uh, through which uh, water could seep into the ground. Uh, the waste uh, from the toilets was in some cases discharged through a sloping channel into a jar or drain in the street outside. Some people must have had the uh, job of cleaning the toilets and drains on a regular basis, of course. <clears throat> uh, there are uh, well-led out streets and side lanes associated with an efficient and well-planned drainage systems are other notable features of Harappan settlements. Even the smaller towns and villages uh, had impressive drainage system. The sewage uh, chutes and pipes were separate from drains for collecting rainwater. Drains and water chutes from the second story were often built inside the wall. The chutes are uh, the chutes and the drains from the second story not open. They are uh, inside the wall with an exit opening just above the street drain. At Harappa and Mohanjodaro, uh, terracotta drain pipes directed waste water into the open street drains made of baked bricks. These connected into uh, large drains along with the main, drain, the main street, which emptied, into, uh, which emptied their contents into the fields outside the city walls. The main drains were covered by uh, corbelled arches and made of brick or stone slabs. There were rectangular uh, soap pit also for collecting the uh, solid waste at uh, regular intervals. These must have been cleaned out regularly, otherwise the drainage system would have become choked and a health hazard. The Harappans <clears throat> made elaborate arrangements for water, uh, for drinking and bathing purpose and the emphasis on providing water for bathing uh, evident at several sites suggests that uh, uh, they were very particular about personal hygiene and it is possible that frequent bathing also had a religious or ritualistic aspect. The source of water were river, wells and reservoirs or cistern. They also have the cistern. Mohanjadaro is noted for its large number of wells uh, and uh, Harappa had much fewer wells but a depression in the center of the city may represent a tank or reservoir that served the city's uh, inhabitants. There are a few wells at Dhalavira which is noted um, more uh, for its impressive water reservoir line with stone. Now we talked about the profile of some Harappan cities towns and villages and when we talked about the some Harappan cities, towns and villages, a very small proportion of identified Harappan sites have been excavated and where excavations uh, have taken place, only sections of the settlements have been exposed and uh, when we talked about these uh, profiles, we uh, took up with the uh, Mohanjodaro. Mohanjadaro in Sindh lies about 5 km away from the Indus in uh, proto-historic time. The river may have flowed much closer at that contemporary proto-historic time. The river may have been uh, flowed much closer. The bed was closer to the city where the site is existed. The site consists of two mounds, a higher but uh, a smaller western mound and a lower but uh, larger and eastern mound. The you can understand the higher mound is smaller and the lower mound is larger. 
there is an extensive area to the east that has not yet been explored the size of the site uh, has been estimated as about 200 hectare on the basis of the density of houses in the excavated area uh, like an archaeologist uh, fair service suggested that the lower city may have housed about 41000 and 250 people for 41000 and 250 people the western mound at uh, mohanjodaro uh, rises up western mound means the citadel the citadel part rises up to 12 meter above the plain the structures here were built on an uh, artificial mud and mud brick platform and uh, the it's about 400 into 200 meter the mound was circled by a 6 uh, 6 meter thick uh, mud brick retaining wall uh, or platform with uh, projections on the out uh, sorry uh, on the southwest and west and a tower has been identified uh, on the southeast it has been suggested that the elevated area at mohanjodaro does not represent a defensive fortification but a uh, part of a civic design to create an elevated symbolic landscape to show that this place is for uh, maybe this place is for, this place is for elite class however the defensive nature of the walls here and the other cities cannot be ruled out the buildings on the citadel mount of uh, mount of uh, mohanjodaro are among the things we associated most closely with the harappan civilization in the north and the great bath the so called granary the college of priests okay the great bath an example of harappan's engineering skills measure about uh, measures about 14.5 into 7 meter uh, with a maximum depth of 2.4 meter and 2.4 meter is uh, like 6 uh, uh, feet 6 uh, or 7 feet around a wide staircase uh, leads down into the tank from the north and south the floor and the walls of the tank were made uh, water tight by finely fitted bricks uh, laid edge to edge with gypsum mortar the mortar that used in uh, that is gypsum and uh, a thick layer of bitumen uh, was laid along the sides of tank and uh, probably also below the floor making this one of the earliest example of waterproofing in the world the floor slopes towards the southwest corner where a small outlet leads to a large corbelled brick uh, drain which would have taken the water out to the edge of the mound remains of the brick uh, colonnades were discovered on the eastern or uh, eastern northern and uh, southern sides of the uh, bath and a similar colonnade must must have existed on the western side of, uh, as well the two large do uh, doors lead into the complex from the south and there were also entrances from the north and east there are a series of rooms along uh, along the eastern edge of the building and one of them uh, has a well uh, has a well that may of rooms along the eastern edge of the building uh, and uh, sorry uh, one of them has a well that may uh, have supplied water to the tank but we didn't have any uh, evidence that uh, it is for the supplied of water or for something else immediately uh, to the north of the great bath is a large building consisting uh, of eight small rooms with common bathing platform okay across the street from the great bath are remains of a large imposing building when we uh, cross the street uh, uh, after great bath there are uh, remains of uh, buildings consisting several rooms a 10 meter square courtyard and a three verandas two staircases led either to the roof or an upper story because of its size and proximity to the great bath 
it was tentatively uh, tentatively uh, identified uh, as the house of the chief priest or uh, several priest maybe and was labeled the college of priest as archaeologists labeled it on the western edge of the citadel mound when we talked about the western edge we talked about the citadel mound at the uh, southwest corner of the great bath the uh, raised on a tapered brick platform it is a structure uh, that was originally identified uh, as a hammam or a hot air bath and later as the great granary the uh, and it is a 50 into 27 meter uh, this existed on to uh, 50 uh, into 27 meter as on solid brick foundation and it was divided into and it is divided into 27 square and rectangular blocks by narrow passageways two running uh, two running east west and eight runnings north and south the entire superstructure may have been found uh, may have been made of wood and a uh, 4.5 meter wide brick staircase laid from the south western edge of the building to the level of the plain there was a small bathing uh, bathing platform and uh, at the top of the stair uh, and a brick lined well at their foot to the north was a burnt uh, brick platform identified by wheeler as a loading dock and it was excavated without recording the artifacts found in the passageways or the room it is difficult to be sure about its function but the absence of reports or charred uh, grain or uh, storage containers has led some scholars to question uh, its uh, identification as a granary in the uh, southern part of the citadel mound there is a large building uh, 25 uh, sorry uh, it's uh, 27 by 27 meter that has been labeled uh, an assembly hall and it is roughly square in shape and is divided into five aisles by rows of rectangular brick piers the lower town to the east covering over 80 hectare may also have uh, have been uh, surrounded by uh, a fortification wall uh, it was divided into major blocks by four north south and east west streets and numerous smaller streets and alleys the main streets were uh, about 9 uh, meter in uh, width the rest is range uh, rest in the range of 1.5 to um, around 3 meter the houses varied in sizes suggesting uh, the suggesting differences in wealth and status in the uh, uh, there is an uh, area uh, divided on the basis of the uh, excavation and the area known as hr the sections of uh, the excavator sections uh, named after the excavators and uh, uh, in mohanjodaro there is an area of uh, hr named as hr hr stand for h har griefs and uh, dk for kn dikshit Uh, there were remains of a large building where many seals and fragments of a stone sculpture of a seated man uh, with a shawl over his left shoulder uh, similar to the so called priest uh, uh, priest king found in dk area the area that is uh, excavated by kn dikshit were found and uh, this building was tentatively interpreted uh, as a temple or the house of the uh, house of an important leader in the western part of the hr area hr means her griefs the archaeologist her griefs there was a double row of 16 houses each consisting of a single room with a bathroom in front and one or two smaller rooms in the back these were tentatively uh, identified as shops or worker quarters workers quarters uh, a number of shops and workshops associated with copper working bead making dyeing pottery making and shell working uh, and this existed in the lower town 
there may have been uh, over 700 wells we found in the city of uh, Mohanjodaro only. And uh, um, in this mentioned by the Jensen in 1989. This gives a very high average frequency of about one in every third house. The wells were 10 to 15 meter deep and were lined with the special uh, wedge shaped uh, bricks. <clears throat> deep grooves at the top edges show the spots where the ropes attach to bucket, uh, bucket uh, the uh, <clears throat> the remainings of the bucket uh, rubbed against them. Most houses uh, or house block at Mohanjudaro had at least one private well and uh, many neighborhoods uh, had public wells along the main street. The, we, can, um, we can imagine people meeting here, exchanging news, go gossips as they uh, waited to fill their pots with water. And uh, in the next, uh, in the line of the next site, we talked about the uh, site uh, Chahundaro, which is also a major site in uh, Harappan civilization. And when we talked about the Chahundaro, uh, it is 4.7 hectare. Uh, it's about 130 kilometer from the south of Mohanjodaro, the distance between the Mohanjodaro and Chahundaro is 130 kilometers around lump sum. Today, the river uh, flows 20 kilometers to its west from the uh, original course in contemporary at that period in protohistoric times, and it may have been uh, more closer. This is a single mound site with no fortifications. In Chahundaro, we didn't find any kind of fortifications. Uh, there are mud bricks, uh, mud brick platform with remains of various structures. The traces of at least three streets have been identified. The main one was five to six, eight meter wide and uh, had two covered drains made of burnt brick on both sides. Chahundaro was clearly an important center of craft. Uh, burnt brick on both sides and was uh, uh, clearly <clears throat> and was clearly an important uh, uh, center of craft and activity some of the houses uh, yielded raw materials such as carnelian agate amethyst and uh, crystal as well uh, as finished and unfinished beads and drills uh, more striking was the discovery of a bead factory with lots of finished and unfinished, uh, unfinished beads, mostly made of statite. Uh, the uh, evidence of seal, uh, seal making also uh, found from here. Uh, the shell working and the making of stone weights seems to have been uh, at the other important craft practiced here. The mound of Harappa cover and uh, the mound of Harappa cover an extensive area of the uh, 150 hectare. Uh, the uh, next the uh, we talked about the Harappa and the, uh, when we talked about the Harappa, we uh, <laughs> definitely uh, told about the we definitely uh, tells you about the. Uh, area that cover by the mound and the mound covered the 150 hectare and uh, Ravi uh, the river was uh, flows uh, 10 kilometer away from the site uh, nowadays and uh, at that time uh, it is uh, uh, nearly to the uh, mound of Harappa. The higher uh, citadel mound lies to the west uh, in Harappa city and which uh, with a lower uh, but larger town to its southeast. The south of the citadel mound is a symmetry of the mature Harappan phase. And uh, the citadel at Harappa was shaped roughly like a parallelogram, about 415 meter north-south and 195 meter uh, east-west. 
it was surrounded by a mud brick wall with massive towers and gateways and uh, the structure inside were raised on uh, one or more high platform because of the damaged nature uh, damaged nature of the mound uh, the clear profiles of the main citadel uh, structures uh, such as those available for mohanjodaro are uh, not found in a very good condition and they are leak lacking to the north of the citadel complex a number of structures were located uh, on a mound uh, named as f surrounded by a mud brick wall this seems to represent a northern uh, suburb uh, connected with craft activity and uh, one walled complex had at least uh, northern um, uh, suburb connected with craft, uh, craft activity. The uh, walled complex had at least 15 uh, units, uh, uh, that is about 17 into 7 meter, and each consisting of a courtyard in front of a room at uh, the back, arranged in two rows with a lane in between. This has been interpreted as workmen's quarter, quarters uh, and to the north of this uh, complex were uh, at least 18 circular brick platform with an average diameter of a little over 3 meter made of brick sets on edge. Uh, these may have been thrashing platform for grain. Uh, do you understand by the thrashing platform? The thrashing platform are... Uh, जिस पे कि आपने देखा होगा कि एक आ, मतलब धान को या कोई भी दाल को जब हम ऐसे आ, हिट करके उसको निकालते हैं ताकि वो झड़ जाए उसमें से फ्रॉम द प्लांट ऑफ दैट पर्टिकुलर पैडी और दैट लैंडल देन अ वुड मोटर फॉर पाउंडिंग ग्रेन मे हैव बीन फिटेड इनटू देयर सेंटर हस्क बार्ले एंड स्ट्रॉ वर फाउंड आल्सो फाउंड हियर uh, the grandi was located to the north of these platforms. It consisted of 12 uh, units uh, arranged in two rows of six rooms. Uh, divided by a central passage. <clears throat> uh, each unit measured 15.2 uh, into 6.1 meter uh, with three sl uh, sleeper walls with uh, uh, air space in between. And there were there was uh, probably a wooden superstructure supported in places by large columns, as in the case of Mohanjodaro uh, granaries. Uh, no grains were reported from this building. Uh, its interpretation as a granary was mainly based on the comparisons with the uh, structures found in Rome. The lower walled town of Harappa, that is called, that we named, uh, that the archaeologist named it, uh, Mound E, is currently being excavated. A large open area uh, inside the southern gateway may have been uh, used as a market or as a place where uh, we, good coming into the city, were uh, uh, inspected. Various uh, workshops were uh, where uh, shell, jet, and copper artifacts were made have been identified. Uh, outside the southern gateway, a small mound revealed uh, houses, uh, drain, bathing platforms, and perhaps a well. This may have been a halting or resting spot uh, for travelers or traders. Next, we talked about the uh, Kalibangan uh, and the literally uh, means of Kalibangan is black bangles. Kali means black and Bangan means bang, uh, bangles. And it gets its name from the uh, thick cluster of black bangles lying uh, all over the surface of its mound. This site lies on the banks of the dry bed of Ghaggar River in the uh, Hanuman Gad district of Rajasthan. It is fairly small with a perimeter ranging from 1 to 3 km. There is a small western mound uh, that uh, known as KLV-1 and a larger eastern one that known as uh, KLV-2. The western is KLV-1 and the eastern is KLV-2. With an uh, open spaces between KLV-1 has evidence of early and mature Harappan occupation. 
वाइल के एल बी टू रिप्रेजेंट ओनली अच्योर हड़पन ऑक्यूपेशन वेन वी टॉक अबाउट के एल बी वन इट इज द इविडेंस ऑफ अर्ली एंड मेच्योर एंड वेन वी टॉक अबाउट के एल बी टू इट रिप्रेजेंट ओनली एंड ओनली मेच्योर हड़पन ऑक्यूपेशन देर इज ऑल्सो स्मॉलर थर्ड माउंड ऑल्सो एग्जिस्टेड देयर एंड विच ओनली हैज अ लार्ज नंबर ऑफ फायर अल्चर्स both the citadel complex and the lower towns were fortified the uh, mature harappan settlement on the western mound at kalibangan was divided into uh, two parts by an inner wall with stair on either side the southern divided into two parts by an uh, inner uh, wall with stairs on either side also and uh, the southern sector had no houses but uh, is noted for a series of mud brick uh, platform there is uh, no houses but a mud brick platform with a row of seven clay plastered pits there uh, we found there a uh, pits and uh, nearby uh, uh, nearby were a well and a bath pavement also the pits have been interpreted as uh, fire altars that is uh, we uh, known as uh, we uh, deciphered them as uh, sacrificial pits in which offerings were made into the fire and the area seems to have been associated with a community ritual the buildings in the northern part of the citadel mound seem to have been houses where people associated with the ritual performed in the southern sector may have lived there is a burial ground also and it's about 200 meter west southwest of the citadel apart from the regular extended burials there were also some circular pits with uh, grave goods and the goods uh, we uh, found there are pottery bronze and uh, mirrors uh, extensively uh, these are the uh, goods we found there and some others also as etc but no human remains we found there the lower town was a rough parallelogram in plan uh, enclosed by a mud brick wall uh, several uh, there are so many streets were traced here oblong uh, fire altars were fo uh, found in houses with a uh street drains of the mohanjodaro type were absent in the lower town at kalibangan the prototype of the, uh, which we found in mohanjodaro uh, the prototype of drains street drains are not found we didn't find it in kalibangan uh, the sewage from houses was discharged into the, through or large uh, large jars embedded in the ground uh, outside the large number of bangles of terracotta shell alabaster stratite and files at the site indicate to that bangle making was an important craft here other interesting artifacts include uh, an ivory comb a copper buffalo or bull uh, what appears to be a stone phallic emblem with a base and a terracotta fragment incised uh, with a horn figure also be found here <clears throat> and uh, in that sense we can say that kalibangan is uh, at the um, uh, at the mature phase is full of uh, rituals kind of uh, culture uh, existed there in the in the series of that uh, when we talked about the um, major cities the banavali included also in it and uh, banavali is existed in the hisar district uh, that is in haryana and uh, it is a fortified site measuring about 300 to 500 meter uh, close to the dry bed of the uh, rangoi river uh, a tributary also uh, the site shows evidence of early mature and late harappan phases and the period second represent uh, the mature harappan culture 
a wall divided the fortified uh, areas into two sections a higher citadel area and a lower town the citadel was a uh, semi uh, uh, semi uh, elliptical in plan and had its uh, uh, own mud brick fortification surrounded by a moat moat is also a kind of uh, fortified town and uh, uh, its uh, moat is known as uh, if we, if you don't know a uh, moat is when we uh, surrounded a citadel uh, from the water or some kind of uh, uh, ditch around the uh, citadel a few uh, streets and uh, uh, structures were identified also uh, were also identified structure and in that uh, series a ramp uh, led from the citadel into the lower town uh, and the mud brick houses had raised platforms uh, that is uh, known as mud brick uh, houses platform raised platform are also known as chabutaras outside baked bricks were used only for wells bathing pavements and drains excavations revealed a multi roomed house where archaeologists identified a kitchen and a toilet uh, with a jar Uh, the kitchen toilet jar uh, kitchen and uh, a toilet with a jar a jar the bidet where what we used in nowadays that seems to have been functioned uh, as a wash basin uh, since many seals and uh, uh, weights are uh, um, many seals and weights were found in this house it may have been belonged to a wealthy merchant the luxury we found in the uh, banavali uh, in that house it, it indicated that it belongs to a wealthy uh, or some elite group or some person there was uh, another big house with a large number of beads of gold lapis lazuli, uh, lapis lazuli and carnelian uh, tiny weights and uh, touch stone show uh, showing sticks of gold also found here uh, this must have been a jeweler's house interestingly seals were only found in the lower town not in the citadel complex uh, lots of uh, sorry to interruption uh, lots of stone weights in small de denominations were found at the site uh, as was a terracotta model uh, of a plow Uh, several houses at banavali gave evidence of fire altars also we uh, previously fire, found the fire altars at kalibangal and now in banavali also we find the uh, we found the fire altars in one place these altars were associated with an apsidal structure which uh, may have had some sort of ritualistic functions which we told earlier when we talked about the fire altars in one uh, kalibangal so uh the uh, there are more uh, there are a similarity between the uh, kalibangan and the banavali now we talked about the rakhi gadi there are uh, five mounds have been identified at rakhi gadi that existed uh, that also existed in hisar district in haryana the citadel mound uh, in rakhi gadi surrounded by a mud brick fortification wall uh had platforms also brick well fire altar some streets and drains of various sizes uh, a lapi uh, lapidary workshop was identified which remains of about 3000 unfinished beads and roughly cut pieces of stone mostly carnelian chalcedony azate and jasper bead polishers uh, polishers uh, for smoothing the beads and uh, hearth for heating the stones also found there in another part of the site bone antlers ivory pieces and finished and unfinished bone points combs needles and engravers give clear evidence of bone and ivory working the cemetery uh, revealed eight burial consisting mostly of brick lined pits in one case there was a uh, there was a wooden coffin we also find found here uh next uh, in the major site uh, when we uh, talked about the major site a recently excavated site uh, that is known as bhirana 
and it all, also existed in Haryana. Uh, there is a, at Bhirana a period second A has been described as early mature Harappan and period second B as mature Harappan. The mature Harappan settlement was surrounded by a massive fortification wall made of mud brick. Three multi-roomed houses, uh, house complexes were exposed. Uh, one of them in the cent uh, central part of the mound consisted of four rooms. Two house uh, complexes separated from each other by a lane and were exposed in the eastern part of the mound. One of these consisted of 10 rooms with a uh, veranda and a courtyard also. And terracotta cakes mixed with ash and clay were found on the floors. Yet another house complex in the northwestern part of the mound consisted of six rooms, a kitchen, a central courtyard, three additional courtyards and an open veranda. The floors were paved with mud brick and brick walls were plastered with mud. A circular tandoor uh, like chula were also found in one of the courtyards and another uh, Tandoor or chula, we called it, was discovered in the kitchen. Chard bones and the skull of a bovine animal were found next to the uh, one of the chulas. Mm, a 4.8 meter wide street ran north to south, uh, north to, to south along the fortification wall, also found at Bhiranam, and three lanes were also identified. Uh, uh, also identified here. The artifacts included a fragment of a thick sturdy uh, red wear uh, with an incised female figure whose pose is reminiscent, uh, reminiscent of that of the bronze Mohanjodaro dancing girl. Next, we talked about the Lothal, the most uh, iconic site. And uh, Lothal is located between the Savarmati River and its tributary, uh, the Bhogavo, in Sora's di the district in Gujarat. The sea is now uh, about 16 to 19 kilometers av uh, away. But at once, uh, one time, the boats from the Gulf of Kambay could have sailed right up to the place. It was a modest, uh, modest sized settlement, uh, 280 into 225 meter. Uh, roughly rectangular in plan, uh, it is uh, and uh, surrounded by a wall which was initially made of uh, mud and later uh, uh, of mud and burnt bricks with the entrance on the south. There was a burial ground in the northwest outside the enclosing walls. Uh, the citadel uh, uh, called the Acropolis by the excavator uh, uh, S.R. Rao was uh, roughly uh, trapezoidal in plan and consisted of an area uh, elevated on a mud brick platform in the southern part of the site. Remains of the residential buildings, street lanes, bathing, pavements and drains were also traced here. To the south of the residential area was a complex and uh, it is identified uh, as a warehouse where goods ha may have been uh, packed and uh, stored also. Uh, obvious, uh, it is obvious that when we uh, packed the storehouses nearby, uh, 65 terracotta ceilings uh, with impressions of reed, uh, woven fire, uh, matted, uh, sorry, uh, matting, matting and twisted cord on uh, one side and the impression of Harappan seals on the other uh, were also found here. Some of the houses in the main residential area were quite large with four of the six rooms and uh, a bathroom, a large courtyard and uh, veranda also we found here. A few had fire altars and small pits with terracotta cakes uh, or uh, round lumps of clay and ashes. The streets were uh, paved with uh, mud brick uh, with a layer of gravel uh, on top. Houses belonging to artisans such as uh, coppersmiths, bead makers, etc. were also found uh, identified on the basis of the occurrence of cleans 
raw materials finished and unfinished artifacts one of the streets uh, was identified as a bazaar street the archaeologist called uh, named it as the bazaar streets on the basis of uh, rooms lining it uh, interpreted as shops the most distinctive feature of the lothal is the dockyard which uh, the dockyard um, made this uh, site iconic and uh, it lies on the eastern edge of the site uh, this is the uh, this is a roughly uh, trapezoidal basin uh, trapezoidal means uh, the one side is more closer uh, the one sided uh, sides of the tank is more closer than the other sides uh, something like uh, parallelogram enclosed by the walls of uh, burn brick the eastern and western walls measured uh, 2 uh, 2 1 uh, 212 meter and uh, the and 215 meter respectively in length so uh, while those on the north and south measure uh, measured we uh, 37 meter and 35 meter the dockyard had provisions for maintaining a regular uh, level of water by means of a uh, slice gate uh, sluice gate and a spill channel for a mud brick platform along the western embankment may have been the wharf where goods were loaded and unloaded. An alternative interpretation of this structure as a water reservoir is not convincing. <laughs> so uh, the dockyard we've uh, talked about in the Lothal is uh, not as convincing for, uh, as the archaeologists found the evidences here. Next is the site is the Dholabira, which is also a, a vast, covered a vast area. And Dholabira is located in the uh, Kadir Island in uh, run of Kaksh in Gujarat also. In the protohistoric times, the water level in the run may have been higher than they are uh, today, allowing uh, that allowing boats to sail from the coast right up to the site. The architecture of Dholabira uh, shows a large use of <coughs> sorry a large use of sandstone uh, combined in places with um, that combined in places uh, with mud brick a feature of harappan sites of gujarat it is uh, also a, a different feature uh, uh, of harappan sites the layout of this settlement is unlike uh, that of any other harappan site it is surrounded by an outer fortification wall made of uh, mud brick uh, with a veneer of stone blocks on the outer face with imposing bastions. You know the bastions uh, who uh, the bastions are made for the uh, in the defensive uh, uh, in the defensive mode with uh, and it has the bastions and two major gateways uh, in the middle of the northern and southern walls. Within the uh, outer walls, at least three different sections were identified and there was a small a castle area, uh, a, a, a ballet area uh, to its west and a larger middle town to the north, all with their own, uh, all with their own enclosing walls. A lower town lay to the east, an interesting feature in a large open area uh, that is called uh, a stadium between the castle uh, and ballet and the middle town. Uh, uh, the castle ballet is one side and the middle town is uh, uh, other side and there is between in between the stadium area also found, we found there, which may have been used for uh, special ceremonial occasions. And there was also substantial evidences of habitation outside the fortification wall, which may uh, represent a suburb uh, kind of uh, area of the city. And the site seems to be looking out toward the sea and it must have been an important stopping point uh, on busy maritime uh, trade routes. The fortified Acropolis. Uh, I told you earlier, Acropolis is the word uh, for a citadel that archaeologists called it. Uh, the fortified uh, Acropolis covered an area of 300 into 300 meter with gateways in the center of its four walls. 
remains of the limestone pillars uh, bases and uh, uh, bases and pillar fragments with a highly polished uh, surface were found in the eastern gateway this uh, discovery has taken the history of a monumental stone sculpture uh, monumental uh, sculpture kind of or architecture in the subcontinent uh, back from the 4th century bc uh, 4th century bc means the modern period uh to the third millennium bc <coughs> in one of the side rooms of the northern gateway of dhalavira uh, lay what seems to be a fallen sign board uh, we found a sign board uh, that is uh, not uh, on the uh, exact place of the uh, where it uh, uh, existed but uh, we found on the ground uh, it the wooden board uh, had fallen uh flat on its face and uh, although the wood decayed uh the gypsum was found intact uh, and uh, the symbols each measuring uh, 13 to uh, 25 or 27 cm perhaps uh, announce the name of the city or the title of its ruler the acropolis uh, had a large uh, well Uh, an elaborated drainage system and large buildings which may have had administrative or some ritualistic functions and uh, the middle town of the dholavira was surrounded by a 316 to 250 meter wall with four gateways the dholavira the middle town had four gateways the lower town gave evidence of houses and areas where various types of craft activities such as bead making shell working and pottery making were carried out outside the city walls there was evidence of additional habitation and burials the cemetery area revealed uh, rectangular uh, pit burials uh, lined with blocks of stone but there were no skeletal uh, remains here we found here and uh, these may have been uh, memorials to the dead the city had an impressive and unique water harvesting and management system it can be uh, noted that this area receives less than 160 cm of rain uh, every year in every very prone to uh, drought the site is flanked by two st uh, streams the manhar and mansar uh the dams were built uh, across these to channelize their water into reservoirs and several uh, large deep water cisterns and reservoirs at least 16 around are uh, located in the uh, citadel and lower town preserved uh, precious stores of rain water so uh, we found the evidence of uh, maybe these are the evidence of rain water harvesting uh, next we talked about uh, aladino in the continuation of this series and aladino is a small not at that kind of uh, large site but a small site and uh, it uh, is 1.4 hectare unfortified uh, village site of the uh, harappan civilization about uh, 40 uh, km uh, east of karachi and uh, houses made of mud brick often resting on stone foundations Uh, and uh, it were uh, laid out in the west or southwest to uh, east or northeast orientation a large uh, a large multi roomed uh, building on a large mud brick platform in the north eastern part of the excavated area seems to have had some special significance another building was uh, associated with three wells the wells at aladino had very small diameters and uh, their mouths uh, range from 60 cm to 90 cm and these small diameter uh, the these wells have a small diameter were uh, we found it in the uh, later medieval period or we called it in the pre industrial period of india that we called in the local language uh, kunya in rajasthan this may have been to able the uh, ground water to rise higher and due to a hydraulic pressure uh, it is more uh, convenient to the uh, uh, well of uh, well with the larger diameters 
and uh, it has been suggested that uh, uh, well water may have been used to irrigate the nearby fields the artifacts we found at aladino included a large number of copper items seals terracotta toy carts and uh, triangular terracotta cakes the most spectacular uh, discovery was a small terracotta jar containing a profusion of gold silver bronze azet and carnelian ornaments these included a massive belt or uh, uh, massive belt uh, or bronze uh, sorry a massive belt of uh, uh, maybe a necklace consisting of 36 long carnelian beads and bronze spacer beads and a multi strand necklace on silver beads <coughs> of silver beads the discovery of ornaments of precious metals and stone at a village site shows that at least some of the inhabitants of this harappan village were, uh, were very rich and they uh, may be belong to the elite class uh, that we uh, told in the uh, site of mohanjodaro or harappa uh, in the dis- in the discovery Uh, the art uh, in the discovery we found the evidence or some artifacts uh, at the harappan sites the animal bones are played a crucial role which shows that uh, how uh, we uh, how the harappans cultured and how they uh, tamed or maybe uh, used the animal we can say and uh, we found a very large number of animal uh, animal bones at shikarpur and shikarpur is also a harappan site in kutch district in gujarat and uh, it is excavated by uh, department of archaeology in 1987 uh, and it had uh, uh, three or uh, three or four session uh, till ni- 1990 the excavation was a small one and it revealed an uh, over 3 meter thick deposit of which the lower levels uh, Uh, layers 10 to 19 represent an early harappan phase the upper layer uh, upper layers uh, 1 to 9 uh, approximately the mature harappan phase and the animal remains found at uh, site were sent to uh, archaeology labor- uh, laboratory at dakkan college pune the preliminary uh, results of the detailed in uh, investigations by pk thomas or pv uh, joglekar or uh, some other uh, archaeologist also desh pandey and mukherjee uh, also has given important information about the uh, subsistence patterns of the harappans in gujarat a total of 15483 around pieces of bones uh, were unearthed in the excavations and it was possible uh, to identify uh, 53.46% of them that is eight the uh, approximately 8000 fragments and there were cut marks and signs of churning uh, on some of the bones indicating slaughtering and cooking which means that the harappans at that site are fond of n- uh, non- uh, fond uh, fond of non vegetarian food the faunal assemblage is consisted uh, of 47 species and uh, in them around 23 25 mammals three are from birds and two reptiles fishes molluscs and crustaceans the wild animal included wild buffalo uh, nilgai uh, chowsinga black bear gazelle various kinds of deer wild pig also and wild ass jackal hare rhinoceros the domesticated animals uh, included in uh, this is cattle buffalo sheep goat horse pig is also domesticated uh, in the uh, included in the domesticated animal and a dog also the bones of the domesticated animal comprised over 85% of the total faunal assemblage in the both and uh, early and the mature harappan phase the cattle bones were uh, most numerous uh, in the early harappan phase uh, around uh, 76 or 78% of the bones were of cattle while in the mature harappan phase their uh, percentage was uh, 70 uh, 8% and sheep goat bones amounted 11.26% of early harappan phase and were reduced to 4.6% it represent that uh, the consuming uh, the uh, consumes of the sheep and goat uh, goat uh, meat is uh, decreased 
in the mature Hadappan phase. Buffalo bones were 4.28% and 4.61% uh, in the early and mature Hadappan phases respectively. Dog bones were all uh, only found in the mature Hadappan phase and uh, that too in very small quantities. And these are not the churd, so we say that dog meat is not, uh, they did not consume it. Very few uh, horse bones were found uh, and uh, these occur only in the mature Hadappan phase. The evidence shows that the consumption of meat of domesticated animals was an, uh, an important part of the diet of the people of Shikarpur or we can say that uh, Harappan's, uh, Harappan culture at that particular site and the contribution of wild and aquatic uh, animals varied considerably in different layers. So uh, when we uh, sum up this, uh, the findings of the Harappans, we found that they are very cultured in their architectural style and uh, they uh, are profound of uh, every kind of food which they uh, found on their land and uh, they uh, try to grow and uh, they are uh, they prefer the luxury items also and uh, the trade and economy also existed at their uh, at that place in the next topic uh, i uh, I want to talk about the craft and the trade and craft in the Harappan civilization. And now you may proceed for the question and answer sessions. And I will, I would like to answer your queries. And please, please, Dr. Khwaja Dhani sir, proceed for the question and answer series. Thank you, Dr. Pallavi. Uh, thank you for such a wonderful and marvelous presentation which you have made. Uh, with the permission of the chair, may I declare this uh, question answer session open? Thank you, the chair. So the first question comes from uh, uh, Ikram Hatab Khan. Uh, what are the main features of the Great Bath? It is addressed to you, Dr. Pallavi. Ma. Thank you. Uh Um, what are the main uh, features of Great Bath? Uh, the main feature of Great Bath is not uh, clear uh, by cleared by the archaeologist, but uh, uh, it assumes that uh, it you uh, used in the uh, uh, some ritualistic bath or some sacrificial uh, activities, and uh, it may be used for some community uh, growth or some community uh, meetings. So uh, the main feature of this is uh, the bitumen and the more uh, the bitumen used, which makes it uh, uh, which made uh, waterproofed and uh, a well uh, near the great bath is also uh, for the uh, uh, served as the reservoir for water. And uh, we uh, we can say that this uh, great bath uh, this great bath uh, at Mohanjodaro is also a kind of mystery and uh, we are not uh, we are not concluded anything uh, less than uh, that archaeologist says that it is only a com it is used as a community bath and we found there and the main feature of it uh, the main um, iconic feature of it is that it is waterproof at that time of the period they found that uh, uh, waterproofing system also there uh, and uh, the next question is, I think. The next question comes from someone by the name of King ASK. Please, uh, you need to write your name. Let me tell you all this. Uh, the question is, what type of script was used in Harappan civilization? Thank you. The script that uh, used in Harappan civilization is, is still... Um, <laughs> kind of be uh, the mystery and it is undeciphered. So we call this period a uh, proto-historic because we didn't know about the script. But uh, some scholars uh, who are worked and working on it, they uh, resemble it with the Brahmi script. And uh, some say that it is the, uh, it have some identical uh, shapes from the Brahmi script. So uh, the archaeologists say that it belongs to the Brahmi, but it is undeciphered yet also. We cannot decipher the uh, all words and the meanings of the words. So we are <laughs> uh, speechless in that uh, matter and it is still, uh, still in debate. 
I hope you have, this must have answered your question, uh, Mr. King ASK. So the next question comes from uh, someone by the name of Priya. The question is, what were the other contemporary cultures? Please, uh, Priya, you need to specify a more bit. I think uh, we should uh, frame this question in such a way that it uh, is uh, streamlined completely. That is, what were the other contemporary cultures during the Indus Valley, uh, during the period of Indus Valley civilization? I think this is a better way of asking question. Thank you. Uh, the other contemporary uh, culture we found uh, that is the Mesopotamia, that is very famous uh, civilization. And there is some, uh, we, when we say about the culture, the culture, uh, con the so many cultures consisted uh, a civilization. And so when we uh, talked about the cultures, there are so many cultures in the early uh, early Harappan phase and that are uh, existed in the uh, Jhob Valley, uh, Quetta and uh, Ahar. These are the uh, cultures that existed in the contemporary of the Harappan civilizations. I believe this must have answered your question, Priya. Slight modification to your question. Sorry for that. So next question is from Sakib Suleiman. What were the importance of seals during Harappan time? Thank you, ma'am. Uh, there are uh, kind of uh, uh, two ways or we can say that it's also a debatable topic that the seal is used as some uh, stamp uh, or some permanent uh, trademark for uh, which is given to any merchant uh, uh, that are uh, that is no uh, we can say the charter and uh, the seals is also used in the economy uh, we didn't know about the uh, the uh, we didn't know about the whole economy of the uh, Harappan civilization. So we can say that if we uh, <clears throat> found the seals and the uh, and the uh, some um, uh, clay uh, beads. So what is the use of it? Then uh, the archaeologist says the seals are used for the uh, economy purpose or some trade purpose. Uh, it is used as the charter to give some merchant to trade uh, freely in uh, any part of the um, any part of the city or uh, culture like city like uh, Mohanjodaro, Harappa and the other city Kalibangan, Dholavira, Lothal and it is the uh, porter charter uh, sorry a uh, port charter uh, which, uh, which give you the freedom to uh, trade freely in that part of the uh, land. What were the use of granaries? The next question comes from Abhinay Kumar Yadav. Uh, he asks that what were the use of granaries during this era? Thank you. Uh, uh, Abhinay Kumar, uh, you uh, already says it. What was the use of granaries? When we say about the word granary, it means uh, it uh, used uh, as a as an uh, as a storage uh, for grains. But uh, the granary at uh, Harappa, uh, we didn't find any kind of uh, we didn't find any kind of evidence of some grains or some husk also. But at Mohanjodaro, we find uh, the charred grains, uh, charred grains at that place. So uh, the your yeah, question also uh, come with the answer. The use of granary is for uh, storage of uh, grain. So, Abhinav Kumar Yadav, I believe this must have answered your question. So, uh, with the permission of the chair, may I uh, sum up the magnificent lecture that has been given by Dr. Pallavi, ma'am. The lecture has very well and very comprehensively covered ecastology, ontology, and epistemology of the topic. And I believe it, you must have all been enlightened so much by ma'am's lecture and you must it, it will be immensely beneficial for you in the civil services. Uh, so with the permission of the chair, may I declare the session for this day over? Thank you, ma'am, for declaring the session over. Thank you very much, Dr. Pallavi, ma'am. Thank you to the chair. Thank you to all the organizers and organizing committee. Thank you very much.